As we celebrate his life this morning, we actually are celebrating you and your goodness to us. And we just pray that Jesus Christ will be lifted up in all that we do. We commit our, our time to you, those who will be leading our worship, uh, those who will be sharing some remembrances of Bobby and Brian as he shares the word with us a little bit later. We just commit this time to you and pray that you will be honored and glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Every 
Prince of Peace, bright and morning star, Jesus Christ is Lord forever. He's the Prince of Peace, bright and morning star, Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnants of the house of Israel. You who have been born by me from birth and have been carried from the womb, even to your old age I will be the same, and even to your graying years I will bear you. I have done it, and I will carry you, and I will bear you, and I will deliver you. To whom would you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we would be alike to, tho- to excuse me, those who lavish gold from the purse and weigh silver on the scale? Hire a goldsmith and he makes it into a god and they bow down and indeed they worship it. They lift it up on the shoulder and they carry it. They set it in its place and it stands there. It doesn't move from its place. The one may cry to it. It cannot answer. It cannot deliver him from his distress. Remember this and be assured. Recall to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things long past, for I am God. There is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me, declaring from the beginning and from ancient times things which have not been done, saying my purpose will be established, and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my purpose from a far country. Truly, I have spoken it. Truly, I will bring it to pass. I have planned it, and surely I will do it. Amen. Wanna sing of your love? Wanna sing of your love? Wanna sing of your mercy? Wanna sing of your mercy? Wanna tell the whole world? Wanna tell the whole world of the greatness of you? Of the greatness of you. So I'll sing of your love. So I'll sing of your love. And I'll sing of your We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name. 
want to sing of your love sing of your love want to sing of your mercy want to sing of your mercy want to tell the whole world want to tell the whole world of the greatness of you of the greatness of you so i'll sing of your love so I'll sing of your love and i'll sing of your mercy and i'll sing of your mercy and i'll tell the whole world and i'll tell the whole world of the greatness of you jesus we lift up your name jesus we lift up your name jesus we lift up your name Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 We come to lift you up, give you praise and lift you up. In everything we lift you up. Sing that again, Lord. Lord, we come to lift you up, give you praise and lift you up. In everything we lift you up. Your name is higher. Your name is higher than the heavens, greater than the nations. Greater than the nations, Jesus. Your name is higher than the heavens. Greater than the nations, Jesus. sing of your love want to sing of your love want to sing of your mercy i want to sing of your mercy want to tell the whole world i want to tell the whole world of the greatness of you of the greatness of you
we are broken down and when we are beaten up What could stop us from a song of unending love? Holy is the Lord You are the treasure, the hope, the bright and morning star You are the lover of our souls and you won our hearts We sing of your great love So we sing We lift our hands and sing yeah. You are worthy of affection You're the radiance of all of its glory Let adoration fill Amen. Church, you may be seated. So as uh, we previously announced, um, this morning is a special time uh, as part of our service to remember a very special uh, brother in Christ, Bobby Yowell. Uh, Bobby passed away this past January 17th, and um, at that time, 
uh, the family and, and some others involved in Bobby's life felt it would be best because of COVID to defer, postpone a, a memorial time for Bobby. And we finally have gotten to that time today. So we're glad you're all here. Uh, we have some very special visitors. I'm not gonna try to introduce everyone except I am gonna introduce uh, Elizabeth and Benny Moore. Elizabeth, would you raise your hand? Elizabeth is Bobby's sister. You see the resemblance. And then uh, lots of other friends. If you're here as a special guest, just wave your hands and we'd like to welcome you all with us today. <clears throat> we want to share a few <clears throat> remembrances uh, as well as thoughts about Bobby's faith that he had in Christ. And uh, we're also going to display some pictures up here. And if you see any that make you want to laugh, just go right ahead and laugh. Um, you'll see one in particular of Bobby dressed up as Abraham Lincoln. And Sharon, if I remember what you said uh, properly or correctly, you said that um, he actually wanted to go to bed with Abraham Lincoln's clothes on that night. <laughs> he liked it so much. So, anyhow. Bobby was born in Winchester on August 25th. Uh, his parents were Warren and Sally Yowell. Bobby had three siblings who are now deceased, uh, Sister Virginia and brothers Douglas and Timothy. And he survived, <clears throat> excuse me, by two sisters, Elizabeth I've already introduced, and uh, um, Roberta was not able to be here today. <clears throat> And Bobby was a longtime resident in caregiver Sharon Harrigan's home. Sharon's going to come and share in just a few moments, so you get a chance to meet her. And he was also a longtime participant in this church, and he was a joy to all of us that got to know him. Um, as I was thinking about today, and as I was thinking about Bobby, uh, the words of Psalm 116, verse 15, came to mind where the psalmist writes, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. And so when I think of Bobby, this, this word precious just seems especially appropriate. And I believe when Bobby went on to uh, be with Jesus on the other side of this life, uh, this past January 17th, <clears throat> 17th that there was uh, quite a homecoming celebration that took place uh, at the gates of heaven and on the other side. So I'm going to ask uh, Mark Kinder to come first and share some thoughts and remembrances about Bobby. What an honor. I have some thoughts about my friend Bobby Yowell. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you all have some great stories about Bobby. I was just talking uh, uh, to a couple of folks. And uh, we're going to have a small snack time afterwards. And I hope that you will be able to share your Bobby stories with each other a little bit later on. Bobby Yao was my BFG. If you know uh, that uh, children's book, it's called A Big Friendly Giant. So Bobby was my BFG, my big friendly giant with the heart of a child. I've known Bobby for well over 30 years now. I was counting back and uh, I thought, well, I've, I've only known him since the late 80s and you realize that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, I met Bobby when the church bought the building beside his home uh, at the old Stonewall Jackson School building. And I started working at the school and the church and part of my duties was to be one of the maintenance guys. So I was usually out in the parking lot and I was sweeping there and taking out the trash and I was helping as the crossing guard. And Bobby would come out and we would start to talk and, and you know how Bobby was. He would come up and he would tell me, I'm tall. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> so uh, we developed this great relationship and he would come over and he would help me to shovel snow and he would help me to sweep up the parking lot. Uh, and uh, his garden, uh, Bobby had a real green thumb. 
uh, uh, Bobby had a little garden right beside our parking lot, so that became part of our conversation. And uh, as soon as I would walk out, you could see him walking out, and he would start measuring his plants to me. Uh, my tomatoes are this big, and uh, my uh, uh, peppers are this big, and my corn is this big, and then he would remember, I'm tall. <laughs> oh, so uh, uh, one, one of the things that we used to do is uh, my daughters used to help me at the elementary school as we were taking out the trash, and one day Bobby comes over and says, Mark, Mark, you got aluminum cans? Well, well yes, Bobby, we do. And, and I didn't realize, but he was a recycler. Bobby was green way before green was a thing, you know? He was taking these cans to the recycler and getting some money. So my daughters went through the building and started collecting these cans and taking them over to Bobby's yard. You would have thought we filled his yard with pirate treasure. He, uh, he would look through them and all of a sudden he would look at my girls and go, you need to squash these more. And he would make the sign for squashing these a little bit more. And then he would show how strong he was. He would pick up both uh, bags of cans and he would say, I'm tall. And then he would uh, do this to my daughters. My daughters loved Bobby Yowl, my BFG, my big friendly giant. Um, that little token started a long conversation with Bobby and me uh, because every time I would meet him, he would ask me, where are your girls? And I figured that was because he wanted cans, but he started to love my daughters. Where's your girls? And I would tell him as they grew up that they were off to school, that they went to school in Lynchburg. I was, I was, and he would get all excited. I was in Lynchburg. Oh, so we had all this stuff together. But that simple question became a seed of deep and profound connection between my BFG and me. Bobby was fascinated by our daughters and they still have a very special place in their heart for Bobby. Later on, Bobby and his uh, longtime roommate, Gary and Carol and John started attending our Sunday services and their presence has become a very rich part of our congregation and we are so grateful for you. But I want to tell you about one Sunday. One Sunday uh, is one I will never forget. That Sunday, my wife and I uh, came up and asked for prayer for one of our daughters. She had been in the uh, terrible earthquake in Christ Church, New Zealand. And uh, her traveling companion and best friend was killed right in front of her. My daughter was miraculously spared, but there she was thousands of miles away in a broken city and was quite distraught. The congregation prayed for us, and as we started, to, uh, after praying for us, we stepped down off the stage, and Bobby Yao, sitting right in the front, spoke up loud enough for everyone to hear, Mark, Mark, I pray the good Lord help your girl. That was the longest string of words I'd ever heard from Bobby Yao, and it, and it, and it changed the dynamic that I had from Bobby from that point on because no longer did he come up to me and during church and goes, where are your girls? He would come up and we would, do, we would do our little ritual. He would tell me how tall he was, how small I was. He would uh, 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 give me some updates on his garden. But then his, his, his face would scrunch up and he'd look at me and go, I'm praying for your girls. And then Bobby became more than just a friend. He became my prayer partner. He became my brother because I would ask him, Bobby, can I pray for you? Oh, he would say, my leg hurts. And I'd say, well, let's pray for your leg. And so we would pray for his leg. And then next week he would come in and go, Mark, Mark, God heal my leg. And he would shake it up and down and we would have such a good time. Proverbs 17:17 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times, but a brother is made for difficult times. And Bobby became my brother. Both, uh, uh, well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three gospels, uh, tell this story of Jesus when people were bringing their children to Jesus for him to touch them and to bless them. And his misguided disciples, thinking that the Messiah had a lot better things to do, were trying to shoo them away, and Jesus had none of that. And he spoke these words from Matthew 19. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them, because the kingdom of heaven 
belongs to people who are like these little children. My BFG with the heart of a child. So I am hopefully confident that one day in a better world, I will again meet my BFG, my big friendly giant, right there he is, wearing a glorious golden crown and wearing a medal around his chest that says, well done, good and faithful servant. My big friendly giant with the heart of a child, I will know forever in the world to come. Bobby Yao, my friend. Sharon, I'd like to introduce to you, thank you, Mark, very much, introduce to you Sharon Harrigan, who is Bobby's uh, longtime caregiver here locally, and Sharon's going to share a few thoughts with us as well. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not tall. Yeah, so uh, lower that down. Okay, so here we are talking about Bobby Yowell, the giant, as Mark referred to him, and he was. He, had a, he was a giant man with a giant heart. He loved God. He loved Grace Christian Church. He loved, uh, even during COVID, when we couldn't attend church, we would put it on the computer. And he, was, he would just squeal. He was just so happy to be able to see Clay at the time um, and a lot of the friends that, that he was used to coming to church and socializing with. Uh, Bobby lived with us for the last three and a half years of his life. They were three interesting years. <laughs> he, was, he, was a, he was a joy. He was so much fun. He was cantankerous. He was that too. And he, um, as soon as one of us would cough, or um, sneeze, he'd be right there praying. I want to pray for you. And we'd have to stop, hold that sneeze, hold the cough. We've got a prayer coming. And Bobby would just break into it for, in, for a few seconds. And then he would say a little while later, now, how do you feel? You didn't sneeze anymore. You didn't cough anymore. And no, Bobby, you took care of that. You really took care of that. That was great. Um, he as Mark said, had a garden. He loved his garden, had one every year. He wasn't able to do a lot of vegetables, but what he did, they, I've never seen such big cucumbers, and he did do some really big fat green peppers, and then he had very tiny green peppers that he just shooed off to his housemate. They were hers. He didn't grow those. He didn't grow, he had nothing to do with that. He had the big one. And so um, he, was, he was very, as Mark again said, very much a green thumb. Bobby loved Legos. He was very much an artist. And I mean that in all sincerity. He could take Legos. He could see a building and then come back home and build that building. He built the new Taco Bell. He built the new McDonald's. And he built the new Chick-fil-A on 250. When they went up, Bobby went up with his. And it didn't take him long. And he went to um, Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A, and McDonald's. And one of the places gave him a little miniature sign that went on his building. And I believe it was Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A, one, one of them. So he had the replica of Chick-fil-A with their sign, the whole deal. He could take a thousand piece puzzle and put that together in a week. Who do you know can do that? Nobody I know. I, I love puzzles and I liked watching people work with Legos, but how do you just see something and build it? Bobby could do it. And that's how he built, I believe, that's how he built his faith. That's how he built his, his love for people and for the things that he cherished most in life was his sister, Elizabeth. And he uh, liked me occasionally. <laughs> there were times when he didn't. And, and I, you know, I wear that proudly. And he, um, but we loved Bobby and we miss him terribly. And we know that, that the one thing, if, if he could be here right now in this room, he would just be so excited because all of us are here. We are different ones of different faiths, go to different churches, but if Bobby, and I'm sure he sees us, look, if he were here personally and saw us, he'd be, as you know, clapping. 
he'd be over in his chair clapping as soon as one of us got up and said anything or did anything or sang a song. Bobby would be right there cheering us on. Um, I don't really think that Bobby was unhappy even when he found out he was ill. I don't think he realized how ill he was because it was an all of a sudden thing. He uh, had a heart condition, but it kind of progressed rapidly, uh, rather uh, very, very rapidly. Uh, within weeks, um, we were in hospice care. And um, that was a bit of a jolt to us. And he kept asking us, you know, um, am I okay? Am I okay? And, and of course, you know, you're comforting because that's what you are supposed to do. And that's what a person like Bobby brings you to do. You wanted to hold him. You wanted to tell him one minute that it was okay, that he was going to be okay. I swore this wouldn't happen, but it did. Bobby will do that to you. He, um, he, he, we played music while he was in his last hours. And one of his favorite songs was I'll Fly Away. And that's what he died to. That song was playing. And we just kind of felt that that's exactly what Bobby did. He flew away. And he was, he was very, um, that's okay. I can cry in either one of them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, play that away, Mark. Um, but that was so, um, it, it was wonderful, really. I mean, if, if anything like that can be wonderful, it can be wonderful because that's what he loved. That's the music that he cared about. And, and you were the people that he cared about. He loved socializing with everyone here, and boy, did he ever love the lunch. Whenever he would come home and say, he used to call me Shad. <laughs> Whenever he would come home, he'd say, Shad, we're having a picnic next week. And I said, well, that's good. Where's it going to be? Oh, at the church. <laughs> I said, okay, well, wherever it's going to be, you're going to be there, right? Yes, he's going to be there. And Bobby was, and he loved to eat. He loved to sing. He and I, well, Bobby was 75, and I won't go into all of that, what I am, but I was, you know, but I do know that every song he would break into way back from the 40s and so on, I could chime in. And when I would sing songs from the days of yore, um, he would chime in. So Bobby and I were kind of like a little camaraderie with our music. So I, I, he didn't get into many religious songs because I didn't know a whole lot of what he knew. But the old jazzy songs and the jitterbug songs and all of those songs... Bobby knew quite well, and he would dance, and he would sing to those, and we would just have a little, a little good time, but um, I'm not going to be here all day, because I'll probably cry again, so, um, and I'm looking at this song that's sitting right here, it says, I'll fly away. Um, I want to thank everybody that, that brought us here, that let us come and do this memorial for Bobby, it was just the right thing to do. Um, Bobby's sister wanted to herself give thanks to everyone who sent cards and who sent thank yous and love out to her and her family, a family that, that really cared so much. She and Bobby grew up together, and they were so very, very close. Whenever anything would happen with Bobby, he would always say, you got to tell Elizabeth Ann. Elizabeth, you have to call Elizabeth Ann, or I'm going to call Elizabeth Ann. Everything was about Elizabeth Ann. So she had to know what was going on, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and so she would like to thank everyone for all of the love that they've sent her way and to Bobby and, and, and throughout his life. I don't know how many of you have known him for years and years, um, but even if you only knew him a week, you knew that Bobby was a wonderful, wonderful person. And so she wants to send a special thanks to Carol Bird, Carol Bird, uh, from the YWCA from the Y, is that where she had sent, was that it? Um, she, um, Bobby was in her swim class, and so they were just really, really heartbroken when they found out of his passing, but they sent um, condolences to her and a special um, letter, I believe it was, that she had written, and it was, it was really quite lovely. It certainly expressed Bobby in the swimming pool, because Bobby loved those big, long noodles. 
and he would <laughs> grab hold of the noodles and just have himself a hot tub and swim and pull at the water. And he looked forward to that every week. And if it rained or we had inclement weather, it did not go well for Bobby. He would be very upset. And we could say, well, Bobby, you know, some days it does rain or some days it does snow and the weather's not good and you really shouldn't go out. He would say, I know, Cher, but I'm missing my class. I'm not happy. I'm not happy, but I'm going to go work on a puzzle or I'm, why don't you go build a building, build a swimming pool. <laughs> but anyway, so he, uh, so, so they really would like to say thank you to everyone. I want to say thank you to everyone for all of the the time uh, to you, John, for helping me so much over the phone for the last couple of weeks getting it together. Um, and I want to thank everyone here for coming because it would mean so much to Bobby and it meant so much to us. Thank you again. Is uh, Carol Bird here this morning? I'd like to read this letter uh, that she did write. Hello, my name is Carol Bird, and I work at the Stanton Augusta Family YMCA in Stanton, Virginia. Bobby was a member of my 1115 water class and loved coming and being a part of this class. He always was a bright spot in my life, as well as the lives of the people participating in this class. He especially liked our once a month eat outs. <laughs> where we would go as a group to a restaurant and celebrate birthdays. His favorite dish was macaroni and cheese. He so enjoyed not only the food, but the friends he made in the class. I'll never forget one time when I was having a difficult time, Bobby came up to me and told me that he had been praying for me. I felt the power of his prayers. We talked about heaven, God, and Jesus quite often and I believe that he is now with them, perfectly healed. Um, Carol Colvin would like to just share a few thoughts. Carol, come on up, if you will. Uh, Bobby was a good friend to me. Me and him used to be boyfriends and girlfriends. He was a good friend. He went to rap with me. He did special lesson. He was real nice to everybody. I missed him very much. Thank you, Carol. In one of his most profound declarations, our Lord Jesus proclaimed to uh, Martha after the death of her brother Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. He believes, he who believes in me shall live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Martha indicated yes, she did believe that. She referred to some uh, concept of a general resurrection in the distant future. Uh, kind of a vague concept for her that she had probably learned as a child and just grown up with. But then uh, Jesus proceeds to call Lazarus, who's been dead now for four days, calls him out of the tomb. Could you imagine if you had been there how that would have impacted your life? Uh, the concept of resurrection in Jesus Christ wouldn't have been just a vague doctrinal belief for some distant time, but it would have been uh, so very real and so very life-changing. And uh, the demonstration by Christ of this reality in him uh, was quite remarkable. Uh, the Apostle Paul tells us that the last great enemy is death, and I think by the word last, he was meaning that it's the ultimate enemy. That is, if all life is as we're born, we live for a few both uh, brief moments and then we die. Then as the author of Ecclesiastes said, life is vanity of vanities. It's the ultimate futility. Death ends it all uh, the way it was. So in the context of that, this good news of the gospel as encapsulated in the words of Jesus about him being the resurrection and the life 
uh, is, is stunning. And it's uh, noteworthy, I think, that Bobby is a role model to us in so many ways because of his very simple childlike faith. And Mark referred to that before in the three Gospels, where it's that childlike faith that is so precious and so important to our Lord Jesus Christ. And in that sense, I think that uh, Bobby really was a role model for us in such a very real way. Um, if there's anyone here who doesn't know Christ like Bobby did, like many of us do, uh, Jesus says at the end of his words about him being the resurrection and the life, he says, do you believe this? And all Christ asks of us is simply that we would embrace him into our lives. And I just want to encourage you, if you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus like Bobby did, uh, come and speak to me or any number of folks here and let us pray with you before you leave this place. This is such an important thing and Bobby's life uh, points us to the fact that that is probably the ultimate issue for each one of us. Will we say yes to Jesus Christ? Would you join with me in prayer as we close this part of the service. Father, we've been privileged to know Bobby as one of your very special and precious children. We thank you for his simple faith that is such an example for all of us. And we thank you for the reality of Paul's words written in Philippians that for followers of Christ that to die is actually gain. This last great enemy that Paul talked about has been turned on its head now and to die is gain because death now is merely a passage from this mortal life into the glorious immortality promised by you to us in Christ. Father, in celebrating Bobby's life, we actually are celebrating you and we thank you for the eternal hope that we enjoy rather than the futility of those who are without hope. While we will miss Bobby in this life, we're thankful that there will be a reunion with him and other loved ones in the life to come. And so as we consider Bobby, we are reminded of these things and we express our gratitude to you for your wondrous provision of eternal life for us in Jesus. Amen. Sharon has already, uh, Todd, come on up and team. Sharon has already mentioned to us that one of Bobby's uh, favorite songs was I'll Fly Away. And I was uh, checking out the uh, theological uh, accuracy of this song and uh, I can vouch for it. So we're gonna sing one of Bobby's favorite songs and we're gonna do so as a celebration and a rejoicing that our, our dear friend is now with the Lord, and this is our destination as well of Christ as our Lord and Savior. So uh, let's stand up and sing this very special song. Thank you, my love. <laughs> All right, let's have fun with this one. Bobby Wood. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away.
fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. need to add that song to our regular repertoire so uh, yeah Brian come on up if you will uh, let's go ahead and dismiss children to Sunday Children's Church and uh, the children to the nursery as well Larry is they're grounded this morning the grounded youth can go back here as well uh, Brian is going to share the word such an important part of our our meetings